Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave. Today I'm going to use the word Nintendo, a word that really hasn't been used in the cave since I started producing videos and it's long overdue. In fact, touching on consoles in general is quite overdue and we need to do it a little bit more. We've got things like the PlayStation 2 Slim, we've got an original Xbox down here, PlayStation 1, and more recently into the cave came this, it's the, uh, the PC Engine. Isn't that the cutest console you've ever seen? And that needs a little bit of retro brighting some um, audio video uh, mods because it's the Japanese version so that will get its own episode as will some of these other consoles but today it's all about Nintendo and it's about what's in this box this has arrived courtesy of robotshop.com So this is what we're working with then. It's a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B and we'll want a micro SD card to go into that. A case for the Pi which comes in this Nest style cardboard box and I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like. It seems a fan is considered necessary for some extra cooling on the normally passively cooled Pi. Hopefully it doesn't sound like a mosquito because it has quite a small diameter which suggests it could be the source of some high pitched annoyance but uh, we'll see. And then there's two USB NES style control pads. If I use NES and NES interchangeably by the way, do forgive me here. In the UK we say NES, I know other countries say NES. And while trying to be mindful of that, both tend to slip out. Anyway, let's get these out and see if they are indeed 100% quality as the controller box says. I expect you like me want to see the case first and here it is. It's constructed of ABS plastic so it doesn't have those telltale rough edges of a 3D printed product and the front flap or cartridge slot on the full scale NES as we know it reveals a network port and two USB ports giving us a total of four USB ports on the front. The other two on the right there imitating joypad ports. The power and reset buttons are fully functional which is really handy and then on the side we have an SD card slot which is easy to access. As are the rear ports for power, HDMI out and 3.5mm audio or composite video out. Composite on a Pi remember only offering 480i interlaced output and not 240p. I'll be using HDMI today. This is a nice touch. It's an SD card holder so you can carry a range of cards around with you stowed away on the underside here. Here's a Pi for scale and let's open up the case because there must be some kind of cable extensions built in for all of these ports to work. Well we've got a Christmas cracker sized screwdriver, the only tool needed for this build and yes some PCBs inside the case providing a USB hub, network port extension and a USB cable to make the power and reset switches work while lighting up an LED on the front of the case. Two pins on the right power our tiny fan and the rear PCB takes power from your micro USB power adapter. It's clearly a mass produced unit which looks very tidy and the plastic is thick enough for it to feel sturdy, no doubt even more so with the weight of the Pi inside it. If it works that is because we have a Raspberry Pi and the instructions clearly indicate we need a Raspberry Pi or is that an R-E-S-Berry Pi? Let's be brave and push on regardless. At first glance you'd think the control pads look like perfect recreations, but my first impression was how light they felt. Here's one, and of course, like the case, it's an unofficial product, so there's no real Nintendo branding on it. I will reserve full judgement until I've playtested it, but in the hand it's light. The buttons don't feel great, and A and B not only feeling different to press, but also sounding very different. That may sound like an odd observation, but the inconsistency in the feedback between buttons, both to the touch and by ear, detract from the quality of the product, and as your interface into the system, perhaps the experience as a whole. That being said, we do of course have the option of using any other USB controller with two or more buttons. I guess it's down to personal preference. For me, it would be a shame not to get the full feeling of the old NES by using a different shaped control pad. Those are the parts then. There's not many of them, as we saw, and they're of mixed quality but I'm ready with my Christmas cracker screwdriver, so let's put it together and we'll try it out with a few of our favourite games.
And so with our memory card in and loaded up with retro pie and a Nintendo style theme, I got stuck into some gaming. This of course is a review of the hardware and not the software emulators, so we won't go into that. Suffice to say the snazzy NES case caught my eye as I was playing and did indeed make me smile. There was fan noise, but it wasn't really noticeable over the game audio. That being said, you could easily substitute the fan for a heatsink for under a pound or a dollar for a completely silent system. What didn't make me smile were those game pads. Sadly, they in no way made up for their first impressions. I gave them more than a fair shot at proving themselves, and they just continued to feel cheap and distracting, especially when the spongy D-pad failed to register presses. So I swapped that out for a modern gamepad, and unless you want to set up dedicated entirely to the NES, then you likely would too, so you have enough buttons for the Super Nintendo, Neo Geo, or whatever system it is that you like to emulate. Controller swapped out, it was more gaming for me. So after an afternoon of gaming, what are my final thoughts on this setup? Well, I think you've probably guessed I'm really not a fan of these control pads. They just feel so cheap and tacky and I wouldn't spend a penny on them. So avoid them. But the case itself, I really like. It's fun looking. It's functional. It has those built in USB ports, which are a welcome addition, as are the power and reset buttons. Really nice on any Pi case and um, the easily accessible network port, although you're probably going to use Wi-Fi for most functions. I know I do, but it's a really nice, fun little case, and uh, I would definitely spend less than $20, less than £20 on purchasing that. I think it will be my go-to pie case from now on. Those are my thoughts. I hope they helped you. You can check it out at robotshop.com if you're interested in this. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and take care.